STEM fans, are you ready? Let's hear it for the world-class NASA STEM Stars team. From NASA centers across the country, we present Allison Evans. Hello and welcome to NASA STEM Stars, where students connect firsthand with NASA scientists, engineers, and innovators to learn about NASA missions, career paths, and opportunities. Today's topic is CubeSats, or microsatellites about the size of a loaf of bread, or even a shoebox. I'm your host, David Alexander, from the Armstrong Flight Research Center. And joining us today is Allison Evans, an aerospace engineer from the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. We welcome to today's program and thanks again for being here. So Allison is going to share a little bit about her background, her career experiences, and the work she does for NASA, and specifically how she builds microsatellites called CubeSats. So as you're listening to her share her story, we want for you to come up with some questions to ask her. So about half of our time today is gonna to be devoted to answering your questions. So please answer those questions in the chat window throughout the conversation today, and we will try to answer all of the questions before we wrap up for today. With that, Allison, I'm gonna turn it over to you to get us started. All right, thank you. So I'm Allison Evans. Um, I am an aerospace engineer at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. And um, first I wanna kinda of tell you a little bit about my uh, educational background and how I got here. So I got my undergraduate degree from West Virginia University and that was in aerospace engineering. And then I went to grad school for my master's degree at the Georgia Institute of Technology, also in aerospace engineering. And along the way, I had multiple NASA internships, uh, which really helped to supplement that education. Well, that's very interesting uh, career path to NASA altogether. Uh, let's dive into your internships here for a moment. Can you tell us what internships are and how they actually helped you? Sure. So internships are um, a period of time that you spend with a mentor at a NASA center. And I'm talking about NASA internships here. Um, and you spend up to uh, like 10 to 12 weeks uh, during the summer and you help them with whatever project they're working on. And along the way, you get mentorship. So you get the, um, to learn about what kinds of things an engineer does. And you get to contribute in a real way to a NASA mission while you're learning these skills. OK, OK. Now, um, some individuals say engineering is just really hard. And you know, there's this idea that everyone at NASA is the absolute best. And the motto here is that failure is not an option. Are there challenges that you actually face along the way? Sure. So uh, I did face some challenges, especially um, first getting into my college courses. Um, I definitely went into it thinking like, oh, I can't, you know, you can't mess up. You can't fail if you're going to be a NASA engineer. Um, but I did fail a course. Uh, it was something that happened. And so it, if someone tells you that they've, they've never failed a day in their life, don't believe them. <laughs> um, it is possible to, to pick yourself up and to move forward after that. So I retook the course and I did better the second time and we moved on. Um, but it's definitely something that, you know, failure is not an option applies to the final mission that you're putting in space, not to your individual um, lifetime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you talked about the idea of mission success and, uh, you know, the missions are individuals that work together uh, in massive teams. How important is teamwork to uh, NASA missions? Teamwork is very important. Um, we have teams everywhere from uh, five to seven people all the way up to teams that are you know, hundreds of people working on a team. Uh, and 
in order to work together, uh, you have to be able to share information with each other. You have to be able to communicate information well. And so one of the skills that I had to learn after college and, and you know, high school and college where you're competing with your peers um, and not really working together in, in large teams, I had to develop the ability to communicate with people and work together with people in a meaningful way so that we could have a successful mission. And in the end, the mission is the main thing. Okay. And uh, what mission are you specifically working out currently? Currently, I'm working on the Dione mission. Uh, it's a CubeSat. So as you mentioned, CubeSats are uh, like smaller versions of large spacecraft. And uh, a CubeSat has all the components of a large spacecraft, but they're shrunk, they're miniaturized. So I like to call uh, CubeSats the, the cell phones of spacecraft. Uh, they're kind of like uh, a cell phone after, you know, we had larger phones and you had to shrink everything in order to fit it inside. So the mission that I'm working on currently is called Dione. And the Dione mission is a heliophysics mission, which means that we're looking at uh, the sun and particles coming from the sun and how they impact Earth and its magnetic field and the atmosphere. So when particles come from the sun, they impact the atmosphere and they change the size of the atmosphere surrounding Earth. It like condenses it. And so Dione is going to uh, study that phenomenon using uh, a couple of different sensors. And it, we're going to learn more about that. And it's going to help us to uh, know how much drag is on satellites from the atmosphere particles like hitting the satellite over and over again at different altitudes when the sun is doing different things. And so um, that is an overview of the Dione CubeSat mission that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. That's uh, very awesome. Now, I also understand that, uh, you know, as uh, a researcher and everything that you have actually had a patent. Uh, could you yes. talk to us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so first I wanna kind of explain what a patent is. Uh, a patent is a legal document that tells uh, everyone in the technolo technology community that this invention has already been invented and you need to have a license in order to use it. And so patenting a technology, the patent actually belongs to NASA and NASA can give the patent to different companies if they wanted uh, the, the technology to be used. And the one that I worked on is the thermal louvers. And the thermal louvers are specifically for CubeSats. Now there's already thermal louvers for big spacecraft. I didn't invent that. <laughs> but these are miniaturized. These are tiny. So the CubeSat size thermal louvers. And the way a thermal louver works is there's a little spring inside that activates depending on what temperature it is. And it'll open and close a flap, or in this case, a series of flaps uh, to expose a plate underneath. And that plate has higher emissivity which means that it emits more heat from the inside of the spacecraft than it would if the, if the flap was closed. So when the stuff inside is hot, uh, you open the flap and you release a bunch of heat. And when the stuff inside is cooler, you can close the flap and conserve heat. So it controls the temperature of the things that are inside of the spacecraft. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, from intern to innovator to inventor, I, I really like that. Um, how do you actually get uh, inspiration? Um, do you have a, a, a big background as a designer? So that's a, a fun story. Um, I actually, when I was in middle school and high school, so the age of the students who may be watching this video, I was really interested in design. Um, I wanted to be an artist of some sort. I wanted to work as a graphic designer or an illustrator or um, something along that uh, along those lines. and. Uh, but I was also really interested in space and I was really interested in the stars and particle physics and I was lo looking up books on black holes and particle accelerators and stuff like that and I didn't know how to fit the two together. I just, I didn't even know what an engineer was. Um, and uh, a teacher in high school actually s said, you know, why not try engineering? I was like, well, it's engineering. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. And so I looked it up and uh, I discovered that there's a way that engineering is, is connected to art and connected to design. Um, when you're inventing something, when you are creating something that has never been done before, you are building a design. You're creating a design, you're making it into something that is real and you're using your creativity to do that. 
And so, you know, I was interested in space. I was interested in design. How do you mush those two together? Engineering. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Um, looks like uh, we have uh, a quick question here. Um, is the CubeSat mission the only mission that you've actually worked on? Do you have any other favorite missions within CubeSat, for example? Um, so I did have a pretty exciting um, heliophysics mission called Ceres that I worked on. That was another CubeSat um, that studied the sun and how it interacts with the magnetosphere. And uh, I actually got to help pack that into the deployer um, there at Rocket Labs where, where it was uh, the launch provider. Uh, and um, there's actually a picture of me which is me looking very intently at the satellite as I'm putting it in the deployer because the thing costs $2 million. <laughs> oh, wow. And so I was holding $2 million in my hands and I was like gently dropping it into the deployer. I mean, other people were there to like help and support, but um, that was that was an exciting moment for me. I, I, you know, I would never in a million years when I was in middle school or high school have imagined myself doing that. Um, and there was a lot of, oh yeah, so here's the picture in the middle of a bunch of us in the clean room assembling the series instrument. You can see three of us there. All of us are trying to fit our fingers into this tiny little instrument to, I think we're, we're epoxying a connector in place. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, so that's, that's a, an interesting thing with working with CubeSats. Everything's miniaturized and uh, human hands are actually bigger than some of the components. So uh, that's, that's a unique challenge that we have in CubeSats. Okay, totally understand. Um, you're definitely, um very well-rounded individual, very amazing. Uh, so the thing is, is like, what do you do in your free time or do you even have any free time altogether? Yes, uh, I love what I do in my free time. I have uh, several hobbies. So one of them is astronomy. Uh, I'm part of the Goddard Astronomy Club. And one of the activities that I was really excited to be a part of was we went to um, the Girl Scout White House camp out and showed the Girl Scouts um, Venus and the moon and such through our telescopes at the White House, like on the, on the grounds. So that was, that was a really special moment uh, in my astronomy hobby. Um, I also do a lot of painting still because I still love art, right? So I, I paint and uh, I also volunteer at a horse rescue. And so there's me and one of the little miniature horses at the horse rescue. I enjoy hanging out with them. Um, up in, in the upper right, you can see I'm holding a balloon. <laughs> and uh, there's, there's NASA balloon missions that go way high up in the atmosphere and, uh, and study things you know, fr from, from there for hours at a time. What we did there with the teachers was uh, we took a smaller weather balloon and we put a little GoPro on it and a little pressure and temperature sensor and, and they launched it from a soccer field and brought it back down and got the, the data from that. So uh, that was really fun. I got to help out. Uh, with that. And uh, I like spending time outdoors. I like camping. Uh, I like growing my own vegetables. And so uh, that's a part of what I do in my spare time as well. Awesome. Well, students, now it's time to hear from you. Hopefully you've been typing your questions in the chat. And if you haven't, then now is the time. So let's take a look and see what questions we actually have from you all together. We have a student um, very interested in terms of classwork. He's basically saying, what type of classes do you, um, what type of classes have you taken in high school and in college to actually become uh, where you are today? Gotcha. So in high school, I took calculus. Um, that was actually the teacher that told me, why not try engineering? Uh, calculus was kind of the, the first step in that engineering direction. Uh, I had, you know, taken other math courses and stuff like that, and it was okay. Yeah, you know, I wasn't like super excited about math, but calculus was different somehow. Calculus um, was connected to the real world. Like you could, you could describe the world around you from basic mathematical concepts, and it just blew me away. Uh, it was like, you know, creating something from nothing. <laughs> and uh, so calculus was an important part. In college, there were a lot of classes like um, statics and dynamics, how things uh, stay up and how they move. 
Um, because I'm an aerospace engineer, there was a couple of classes on fluid flow and fluid dynamics, um, supersonic fluid flow. So, you know, things are going at supersonic speeds, like fighter jets or th something like that. Uh, you learn about shock and things like that. Um, and then my internships really helped out because that was hands on. Um, as much as college classes prepare you for your work, nothing replaces internships. Um, a lot of things that I didn't know how to do. I, you know, I didn't ever touch a torque wrench before my internships. I didn't know what a 440 screw was during my internships. Um, having that experience, having that hands-on experience is definitely um, what got, what solidified for me that yes, I can be an engineer. Yes, I can do this. And yes, I like the work. Um, that's one of the main things that an internship is good for is knowing whether or not you're going to even like the work that you're you're thinking of doing. That is definitely true. I totally understand uh, all together with that. Uh, we have another question from a student uh, essentially asking, what advice do you have for students who are trying to decide uh, what they might want to do or uh, where they may want to go for college? Right. So, um, I will tell you a, a little a little secret from I've, I've also mentored interns um, after your first job. The college that you go to matters less than what you learned. Um, and so if you're going to pick a college, please pick one that you want that is right for you. If you're thinking about, oh, you know, I know exactly what my major is going to be. I'm never going to deviate from that. And you want to look a college that is very specific, go ahead and pick that one. If you aren't sure about your major and you're like, I don't really know whether I'm going to stick with this major or not, go to a larger university that has other degree options for you. Um, cost is a factor. Um, cost was definitely a factor in how I chose my undergraduate degree. Um, I wanted to be in-state because it was cheaper. Um, but know that no matter which college you go to, as long as it's accredited, um, it's it's something that is useful, but it's not going to define you. So um, pick what you want. Okay, that is excellent advice altogether, Allison. Um, I have a technical question from a student. Uh, how do you start building CubeSats as a beginner? As a beginner, let's see. So colleges build CubeSats. <laughs> I don't know if everyone knows that or not. CubeSat started off as college projects. And then um, NASA looked at it and said, hmm, I think we could put real instruments on that. <laughs> okay. And so a lot of the early CubeSats were uh, collaborations between universities and NASA, and, and many still are. Uh, if you're first trying to build a CubeSat, uh, there are a lot of off-the-shelf components which you can use if, if you're building a CubeSat for your, your high school or your university. Um, the most important part is making sure they work together. Um, you can have individual components and they may work fine by themselves, but once you put them together, they may work in weird ways. Um, they may not fit together. They may electrically not work together. The software may not work with the other software. So really having a good, and it's called systems engineering. Um, systems engineering is knowing how things fit together and how different types of engineering, electrical, mechanical, computer science, computer engineering, all come together in a system. And so that is the key point. If you're first starting out, make sure everything works together. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Totally, yeah. totally understandable. Um, so uh, do you have any uh, role models? Uh, who do you uh, look up to? Ooh, a lot of them. <laughs> I really, I look up to uh, a lot of my teachers that I had in high school, college. Um, one that I, I definitely remember is my middle school, seventh grade math teacher, Mr. Shalowitz. Um, he actually, he in addition to teaching me pre-algebra, which, you know, is important, he also took the time out of his own day to use his the study period um, to help me, tutor me through algebra in eighth grade. And uh, I remember him uh, one day, I, I was tired, you know, and I just, I was like, I just, I'm just gonna lay my head down on my desk and not go. Um, I, you know, I just don't feel like it. And he came in 
to to my study hall and and said I took the time out of my day for you you need to show up and that was so important it was so important for me to know that like it's possible for me to do this first of all and also like he gave me that that motivation like you just need to show up um and that carried through my whole career um and so that's that's one of my main mentors it's just like the teachers who helped me realize that like you can do this it's going to be hard work you're going to have to show up but you can do it absolutely i totally understand um as a segue here uh in terms of inspiration amongst other things uh, what is your favorite nasa memory Ooh, let's see well so in one of my internships i got to um go to alaska and that was for i guess it wasn't it wasn't in my internship let me um the internship was where i built the instrument that instrument that you saw on the internship page um okay. and then I was employed, and then shortly after that, I got to go and help out with the, the rocket, sounding rocket launch that it was on. Sounding rockets go up into the atmosphere, they stay in space for a couple of minutes, and then they come back down. And so it's, it's called a parabolic um, flight, you know, up and back. And so uh, I got to watch the launch from inside of, you know, on the screen, but from inside of the bunker that's like right next to the rocket. <laughs> Okay. And so it was really exciting for me because, like, I'm in Alaska, which I, where I've never been in Alaska before, and I'm, like, on this launch range, you know, with my ESD jacket, um, electrostatic discharge uh, uh, jacket, and uh, I'm, I'm, like, watching the person with the big red button, you know, there's more than one big red button, so they don't have, yeah. Um, and and I'm, like, in the bunker, and you can, you can feel the vibrations from the rocket launching outside, and you know it's going to space. Like you're there in the bunker, you're you're feeling the vibrations from this like crazy thing that's going to space, and and your instruments on it, and it was just like really fulfilling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was one of the coolest moments that I had at, at NASA so far. That's amazing. Now speaking of instrumentation, uh, with NASA returning to the moon uh, as part of the Artemis program, what role will uh, CubeSats actually play in this program? So CubeSats are secondary payloads, which means that they hitch rides on the rockets of things that are already going to a place. Um, there have already been CubeSats that have gone and orbited um, the moon and Mars because they hitched rides on moon rockets and rockets that are going to Mars. Uh, and so CubeSats will continue to do science, lunar science, uh, as secondary payloads, where the main payload is there and they have uh, a little bit extra mass or, 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 you know, they have to balance the rocket. And so rather than just put a lead brick there, why not put science there? Um, so you put your scientific, you know, CubeSat in there and it launches with it. So um, CubeSats definitely have a role in our return to the moon. And uh, I look forward to seeing what kind of science they do. Yeah, definitely. I totally understand you on that one. I mean, Leave it up to the uh, engineers at NASA to uh, balance everything out with CubeSats. That's uh, amazing. <laughs> How so, can we fit more data? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, do you have any final thoughts or maybe some advice for our students out there today? Um, I would say don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to look stupid. Um, there's no shame in not knowing something because you've never been exposed to it before. There's no shame in not knowing something because you hadn't like experienced it yet. Um, one of the main things that I learned through all of my internships and all of my experience at NASA is that asking questions is always the answer. Um, and the knowledge that you gain is worth any small embarrassment that you didn't know it. That's excellent. Um, well, here's the thing, guys. Uh, looks like we're just about out of time for today. But before we go, we have a student challenge for you. So we're actually challenging students uh, to build your own spacecraft. And in this activity, you will actually get the opportunity to design your latest and greatest satellite. So your satellite could help study things that are happening on Earth, uh, take pictures of planets within our solar system, maybe even keep an eye on our sun, or even find planets elsewhere in the universe. 
So if you can dream it, definitely be it uh, and create it. So uh, you can actually see the link there uh, to the activity uh, and that will actually take you to the Space Place website so you can begin to complete your spacecraft. And we hope that you will share your work with us on your activity at hashtag NextGenSTEM. Now here's the thing, two more things before we wrap up I want to say thank you to uh, Allison Evans for coming on our show today. It was really outstanding to get the opportunity to speak with you and learn more about the cool and awesome work that you do at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Lastly, join us for our next STEM Stars Chat on June 12th at 2 p.m. Eastern, where we're actually going to learn about how NASA uses scale research models for testing. So we want to thank everyone for attending today's program. We will definitely get the opportunity to see you next time. My name is David Alexander, and I'm signing off NASA STEM Stars. Take care and have a great day. Bye.